Your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concept Sports Podcast, where we discuss everything in the world of sports. I'm Ben. I'm Alex. How's hey, it going? It's good, I hear man. you guys had some unfortunate events yesterday at the studio. Yeah, the, the um, the um, what's what I'm looking for? The electricity went out. It was was it just like the whole area, or do you know? I don't know actually, not sure. I just came in to do the shows, and the lights were all off. I was like, "Hey guys, why are you sitting in the dark?" And then they're like, "Oh, the electricity went out." I was like, "Oh." Okay, and I was going to sit down. Did you like, know how long it had been out for? Or no, nothing. No, no clue. Just... And then I was like, "Oh, okay." And I went to go sit down at my desk, and they're like, "Oh, you can go ahead and you can just go." Like it's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, without without electricity, we are literally a fish out of water. We have no possible chance to do anything. So yeah, it's literally yeah. I got here and I just left. Like I didn't have anything to do. But hey, on the brighter side of things, I got NFL Network back. Did you have a problem with it? Dish or? Network was like reconstructing. They're like contract. negotiating. Yeah. Okay. And so I didn't have it for like a month and a half, which is not cool. Like that's that and ESPN, unless I'm recording stuff, are like the only things I watch. Okay. I mean, movies, but I mean, like if I'm on a station, it typically between those two so i was pretty uh pretty upset pretty upset for a few for a few good weeks i can yeah. understand nfl is your favorite sport so yeah man i i watch that like that's why I, people always ask me why i know so much about football it's because i you know i watch it all the time like there's no reason i should know who kind of like me with soccer yeah there's like yeah it's like there's no reason why i should know who the starting left end on the steelers defense in 1976 was but i know who it was there you go you know what little I mean? little party facts you know yep mm-hmm. i call them fun facts of the day i i, I do construct those actually um do you want to you should he- like put on twitter every day do you want to hear a fun fact of the day before we get the show sure started? knock yourself out why do pirates wear eye patches so they could i'm gonna guess okay so when they look through their telescope Thing, they already have one eye closed. Mm-mm. It was so that they had one eye adjusted to the light, and then they could go under deck and have one eye adjusted to the dark. Okay, I I see. Interesting. Clever, right? One would think it was for the telescope, but it's for the light. There you go. Fun fact of the day by Alan. Fun We're fact gonna, of the day. You know what? We're I might start introducing that, that a thing. You have to give us a fun fact every day. Okay. Okay. So anyways, I have a lot of them. Well, you better because we're gonna penguins need one every don't time. have teeth. You should have saved that for next show. No, I'm going to have a now great, you have to I'm gonna have come a up with one another one. Show. Anyways, as we wait for Alex's fun fact for our next show, we're going to jump into this show. This show we have yeah, a fun lot. Fun fact, the show is starting. We have a lot of things to cover. Primarily, first and foremost, we're going to be talking about Russell Westbrook signed a three-year, $85 million extension with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right after that, we're going to move into more Olympic news. Did you know the Olympics are actually going on already? Only because you just told me. I seriously did not know. The Olympics actually started yesterday. We had soccer. We're going to update you on well, the Because it doesn't women's... make sense for it to start before the, the opening, opening ceremony, ceremony, which is Friday. But it's already going on. So we had we had women's soccer. We'll update you on the table. And we have men's soccer currently going on. And then we're going to end the show with Nick Foles. He has a new team. Signed up as a backup, but mm. a new team and a team we maybe weren't thinking he would go to. Jeremiah and I talked about it a little bit on the football podcast, and he did mention them as a contender. Okay, I well, was all for it, Cowboys, and we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that in the last segment. But first and foremost, we're moving into Russell Westbrook. Russell just Westbrook, mentioned, signed a three-year, $85 million extension with Oklahoma City Thunder. Your thoughts, Alex? You know, it's weird, um, only because, you know, for a couple weeks ago, it was like, oh, they're going to trade him, trying to get trade done, and now they're extending him. You know what I mean? It does save them the trouble of him being a free agent next year, you know, and having this yes. issue. Um, they're not going to have this problem for the next three years. He won't become a free agent until after the 17, 18 season. So that at least is a plus for them, it seems like. Um, but for weeks and weeks, I thought 
that they, you know the the thing was he was going to get traded. So it was. I mean, I was surprised to see that they gave him a new deal. I'm surprised uh, he signed it initially, yeah, uh-huh. but after after I looked at the details, it, it made a lot more sense. In a way, I feel good for the Thunder because I'd say for the past two three months, they've been on an emotional roller coaster. They were up three <coughs> one over me. the Warriors. Looked like they were going to the NBA Finals. The Warriors end up coming back. Looks like Durant might stay. Then he goes to Oklahoma City. Now you have Westbrook up in the air. What is he gonna do? Now he resigns. So now you you have really you're just going up and down with the with the Thunder. For Westbrook, this makes a whole lot of sense. This year. This upcoming season, he's going to be making about $8 million more with this mm-hmm. extension. He'll be a free agent, not after next season, which he originally would have been, but the season after. So he's got to stay two more years. So that gives the Thunder a little bit of leeway to possibly make a trade for a big-name guy, maybe sign someone in free agency. Reports are before this deal, they were chasing someone like Blake Griffin of the Clippers. Mm-hmm. After next season, he'll be a free agent. So they were chasing someone like Blake Griffin – Perhaps they can try and add another piece because this is Westbrook's team now. Let's, let's, oh, 100%, be, let's be honest. Yeah. So it's a good move for Westbrook because he's going to make more this year. The Thunder can try and – try and they have a little bit more time to try and bring someone else in. Westbrook could be a free agent after two years. So he has – he'll be in his 10th year in the league so he can earn like the, the max max deal of any, any player so he can sign really anywhere he wants for even more money if he chooses to take that route. So it makes a whole lot of sense. I was just surprised that Westbrook originally agreed to it. You can kind of say like Westbrook is like the hero of the NBA and the Warriors now. Or not the Warriors, I'm sorry, of the Thunder after Durant went to the Warriors. Mm-hmm. He's like the anti-KD. Yeah, you know? this kid came into my work the other day and he was wearing a Kevin Durant like jersey shirt. And Of the Warriors? Of the Thunder. Oh, okay. And I was like, are you a Thunder fan or are you a Kevin Durant fan? And the kid just looked at me and goes, <laughs> and like walked away. So what does that mean? I think he's a Thunder fan. He's <laughs> he like a hasn't little, got a New Jersey yet. A little salty. Clearly. Well, yeah. I would be too. I mean, basically, the face of one of the faces of your franchise, one of the top, I'd say top three players in the NBA, just totally bounced on you, just turned his back on you and left. I mean, I say the I say the Thunder are still in somewhat good good terms. I'd say in the West now you have obviously the Warriors really separating themselves from everyone. I see the Spurs are right there. You can maybe move the Clippers up there with the Spurs, maybe a little bit behind them. But then from there, you have really just a a huge drop, I'd say, from teams like Memphis. Maybe you can throw the Thunder in there, Portland Trailblazers, Dallas. You have a huge drop there. So, Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, with Westbrook there, I'd say, honestly, this could be really hard to sort of – with staying an 82 game season, but he might be able to average a, tri- a triple double. <laughs> I don't know about without, that. Well, I mean, without Durant there, he was averaging a triple double just about. Yeah, I mean, that's so just, it would be hard, hard to, to average though. It would be hard to average over a whole season. I mean, Oscar Robertson did it, but that was a really long time ago. So, in now in the NBA, it's a lot different. But definitely good news for Westbrook and for the Thunder. So, yeah, hopefully they can try. Because I feel really bad for the Thunder, as I mentioned. Hopefully they can try and trade or maybe sign a big free agent after next year they do have some nice pieces with steven adams and his mm-hmm. canter traded for ola Depo. so hey man maybe maybe durant comes back i don't see that no. happening durant is no, just I on don't. a on a basically a two-year deal but he'll opt out after next year and i think he'll sign a huge deal with the warriors so mm-hmm. he's gonna be there for a while I yeah think. i mean it's i still think it's a it's good for westbrook i mean there's still obviously a playoff team with him and they obviously have enough pieces to be a playoff team despite the fact that durant left um, and I mean, he, he played well without him there also. It's not like, like you said, it's not like, you know, they had such a horrible time without, uh, with only Westbrook on the court this year. And anyway, you know what I mean? Without Kevin Durant, he played 61 games. He averaged 28 points a game, 8.4 assists, 7.1 rebounds, and he had 12 triple doubles. Right. And that's, I would say. I'd say really Westbrook, in my opinion, is probably the favorite for the MVP right now. He's going to really carry OKC if he can stay healthy all year long, and he's going to put up monster numbers. They also went on to say that they're not looking to extend any contracts of any other players. People like Oladipo, Steven Adams, 
They're not trying to extend them, Andre Robertson. They're taking advantage of smaller cap holds for the 2017 free agency mm-hmm. class. So they're trying to push for someone else next year. Gotcha. Okay. And, and real quick, they did release the 2016-2017 MVP odds, if you'd like. Okay, uh, go ahead. Coming in in the first uh, two-way tie is LeBron and Steph uh, at 15-4. to four. Okay. Then Russell Westbrook at 4-1, to one, and then Kevin Durant at 8-1. to one. LeBron I can see. But Steph, I don't see. His numbers are going to drop with Durant there. Yes and no. I mean, people thought his numbers were going to drop because so many people had the ball in, you know, in that offense already. And I still think that he can do crazy stuff. Oh, well, of course he can. And, and he's, he's the reigning MVP. He, there's always he's always going to get no, you know, the favorite to regain it if nothing's really happened. Right, and he has the three point shot, which really adds a whole other dimension. I just think his stats. He averaged about 30 points a game last season. I'd be surprised if he gets more than 25. Because mm-hmm. you're going to have Durant, who's going to be averaging about 25. I'd say we'll Clay, see. We have no idea how. I'd it's say Clay work can out. easily average 20, and Draymond can easily average 15. We'll see. I mean, LeBron still won the MVP when he had Wade on his team, so you know you that's assume, true. But I I can't but say until so I much, see it. LeBron did so much more. He was like a contributor. He would pass. He would just he would rebound. He, re- he weirdly enough rebounds for being undersized. Yeah, LeBron would average guys. like seven, eight rebounds a game, though. Well, LeBron Steph Curry than can't him. average that, right? Of course. So Steph gets those like kind of off, off the side rebounds, and every once in a while it gets weird, like sort of like in he just happens rebounds. to be in the right place at the yeah, right time. Yeah, it's, it's weird, and then he runs halfway down the court and throws it up. So another notable names, real quick, I want to mention before we take our first break. Blake Griffin is twenty-two to one. Followed by Damian Lillard, twenty-eight to one, and then this is where it really drops off. Giannis, I like this guy's name, Ante Tokonpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo from the Ante- Bucks. Antetokounmpo, that's that's how you say it. Yeah, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Thank God, my me and my buddy Matt started a um, uh, NBA two K, my career two K sixteen, and he's like, I don't know how to say this guy's name. I'm gonna go back and say it's Antetokounmpo. Yeah, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah. He's He's a player for the Bucks. He's, yeah, he's on the Bucks. Yeah. He's young. He's like he's, been in the league three, four yeah, years. He's they like call 26. him. They call him the Greek freak. Ooh, that's a good name. He's a, he's I a can't good, wait to tell him all this stuff. He's a good young player. He's actually grown since he's been in the NBA. I think he started at six eight. Now he's, oh my. he's either six nine or six ten. He's super long. Oof. Picture like a Durant body type, a tall. No, I know what he looks guy. like. Yeah, yeah. So. He's, um, he's not a bad player. He's going to be the future of the Bucks. Well, he is in a one, two, three, five way tie for 33 to 1 with himself, Carmelo Anthony, DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah, that's laughable. No offense, D Cuz. Kyrie Irving and Chris Paul. And then you have three players tied at 50 to 1. That's Draymond, Carl Anthony Towns, and John Wall. And then five players again. No, four players, excuse me, at 66 to 1, John, which would start with LaMarcus Aldridge, Kyle Lowry, Isaiah Thompson. Tom, sorry, Thompson. I say Thomas. Coming out of retirement, Thompson. Isaiah Thomas and Dwayne Wade. And then to finish out the relevant odds is DeMar DeRozan at 75 to 1. Did you did you mention you didn't mention Kawhi Leonard on that list, did you? Kawhi Leonard is 16 to 1 with James Harden. Oh, okay, I was going to say cuz Kawhi Leonard I skipped a few. Um 14 to 1 would be Anthony Davis, the two of them that are at 16 to 1 would be James Harden and Kawhi Leonard, and then Paul George and Blake Griffin both 22 to 1 and then Damian Lillard 28 to 1. Okay, I was going to say because Kawhi Leonard finished second in the MVP voting last year, mm-hmm. so Really regarded as maybe the maybe the best two way player in the NBA. He's such a good defender, and he can obviously contribute a lot on the offensive side. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, for for the MVP odds, I mean, I don't know. It's obviously too early to tell, but I still I, think I'd in a lot my, of places Steph's still going to be the favorite. I'd say my favorite right now is Westbrook. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I really wouldn't. Yeah, at all. No, not at all. Okay, well, hey, we're going to take our first break here, and then we're going to get into some Olympic news. So, you guys, don't go anywhere. We will be right back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. (laughs) 
whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Alex, P shooters ready? Six shooters. I don't shoot no pee. Six oh. only. Okay, In- interesting. So, as I mentioned, did you not? You didn't know the Olympics were going on already, did you? I knew. I mean, I mean, I knew the Olympic, the opening ceremonies were Friday. I didn't know that anything got. I, you know, honestly, when you said that, I do think that I knew at one point or another that. The, the Olympics started, you know, like like some sports because they go so long, do start early. So I think maybe like subconsciously I knew that, but I did not realize it. Yeah, I didn't either. Like, I didn't know. Like the soccer started yesterday. The women's soccer did, and we have the men starting now. I thought that it started really Saturday because you have the opening ceremony Friday night, and then they, you know, get right into it. But they're already work. They're already starting the olympics so we had the women's soccer yesterday every nation represented did play alex so we have brazil coming out on top three nil over china sweden beat south africa as well they beat them uh one nil so that's in group that's in group e Mm -hmm. some some notables group f germany alex they uh had quite a game yesterday they played zimbabwe score prediction four nothing six to one six to one germany And then the United States ended up beating New Zealand 2-0, and then France ended up beating Colombia 4-0. And this is women's soccer, yes? Yes, yes. yes. The men's is going on today. So at the half, we have Iraq and Denmark at 0-0. We have Honduras and Algeria playing later. We have the Neymar-led Brazilian team. They're playing South Africa later today, and Mexico and Germany as well, Alex. Probably the biggest game, in my opinion, of that, that day. All right. Well, hey, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for some of the Olympics. At the same time, I'm not... And um, some of those reasons are reasons what we're going to get into right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, so while it might be great that some of the games and sports are currently going on, one thing is not too great, Alex. So, Chinese hurdler, and I know I'm going to butcher this name, and I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Shi Dongpeng? Shi Dongpeng? I'll help you. I'll look. He was with a journalist when he arrived at his hotel late night in Rio just about a week ago. The two were tricked by con artist... Con artist when one of them distracted she by vomiting all over him. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that looks pretty right, the way you said it. She Dong Peng. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so he's getting vomited on as he arrives at his hotel. So already not, not too good. So, of course, if you're getting vomited on, you're, th- you're running to the bathroom to clean yourself up. Meanwhile, the journalist was chasing the person who threw up on him. So he's chasing him. When they both came back to the lobby, they found out that all their belongings had gone missing. So there was like a a con artist scheme that one guy's gonna like throw up on him, the other, and then they're gonna spread out and chase him off, and then the other guy's gonna come and steal all their stuff. Steal it from where? From their hotel room, their lobby. Wow! Right in the lobby, and th- this is this is what happened. So, and then obviously they went to the local police station to report an incident to realize that there are just a million people waiting in a long line to report other crimes. So of course you're gonna just stand there for hours and hours. Yeah. So things already, and just another incident, things not going too well. I believe we had an athlete from New Zealand get kidnapped earlier before, maybe a week ago when he arrived in Rio. So here's here's my question I'm going to pose to you. Can these Olympics seriously be considered a success? Currently, I don't think so. Like the Olympics officially run from august 5th through the 21st Mm -hmm. if we sort of do a show two two and a half weeks from now middle to the end of august can we say oh wow these olympics were actually really good and a success i don't think so no there's even there's a picture that i was i saw too is a family arriving in brazil and they're walking past a a big banner held by people and it says quote welcome to hell police and firefighters don't get paid whoever comes to rio de janeiro will not be safe yeah, I've I've seen that. The the police are, are protesting, they're boycotting, they're not doing their jobs. Obviously you're not getting paid that you would obviously not be happy as well. So the military's trying to step in. There's there's so much crime there. We know about the unsafe water conditions, the Zika virus with mosquitoes. 
I, I'm with you. I don't know how you can say that it's going to be a success. I, I would be surprised if – I'd say it's, it's a success if they can somehow not have any more incidents like this happen. Yeah, I mean – I don't think it's going to, but – Not um, only is there these problems too, then you have things from the outside like um, the Olympic Committee having to clear Russian athletes to compete. Yeah. Um, they, which is, I mean, they did clear 80 Russians to complete, to compete at the 80, uh, the Olympic games, but still like you have those problems from the outside and then you have the, all the problems from the inside. Like, like, does it even, does it make you like worried that something could happen at the Olympics? You know what I mean? Like in a venue, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Like, you know, anyone could easily be robbed, kidnapped as they're just sitting there watching, you know, the track and field events or. I'm I'm not sure who would really go there to to support their country. I mean that's the that's the reason the Olympics have been losing so much money. You look at Sochi in Russia a couple of years ago, they lost about five hundred billion dollars because who wants to really travel to Russia right now? Mm-hmm. You could say the same thing about Rio de Janeiro. Who wants to honestly travel to Rio de Janeiro right now? I, Nobody. I don't. So they're gonna lose a lot of money with these Olympics. I the number will come out, but you know they're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah, and we're going to hear all these people who are getting sick already. Um, there's Australian sprinter Alex Hartman. He's been knocked back by abdom- abdominal surgery. to complete. To, he can't compete now because of a mystery stomach bug that caused him to pull from himself from the games. Did you see what they were chanting at Hope Solo yesterday? Hope Solo, the U.S. I women's. thought she wasn't playing because she's having a kid. She's playing. Oh. So they were chanting. they were chanting at her. During the game yesterday, the women's, the United States women's goalie, they were chanting Zika, Zika, as she's like getting ready to kick the ball. Why on earth would you do something? I mean, like you know, that? what I mean, that's like so that's mean. it's terrible. You know, what I mean, it's terrible. Like you could say maybe the events could be a success for certain athletes, but the games as a whole, there's no way that this can go down as one of the, you know, a good Olympics, one of the best Olympics. There's just too much negativity going on with it. This just can't happen. I don't. I don't see any way possible. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I currently, I mean, already, it's in a bad spot. And we really haven't even started yet. We've only had one sport really going on, and that's the soccer. And that's not even one of the the super super big sports. Everyone looks at the summer Olympics. You think of you think of the basketball. You think of the volleyball, track, swimming, the gymnastics. So, I mean, you don't even have. Really, it getting into the thick of things yet, and you have all, everything bad already. Yeah. So, I'm gonna be watching the <clears throat> opening ceremonies. I hope they do a great job. I hope everything supposedly looks good, but we'll, I don't. I don't see how it happens. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm with you. And I mean, with the state of the world and safety in that aspect too, it's gonna be in the back of people's minds probably the entire time. It's gonna be a worrisome thing. I feel like. You know what I mean? Just in general. Just in general. Not yeah. to mention what's going on in the Olympics and in Rio de Janeiro and everything like that. So, yeah, scary to think I'm, about, man. I'm I'm with you, man. I don't I don't I don't think this this could be. But what what if it is? Like, what if somehow they then good because what it if needs somehow to they be. don't have any more incidents? They sort of get their act together. Then and they were is... hiding it because I don't know how more robberies aren't going to happen. That's just the, apparently the state of this of the country. Well, you know, one one place I don't think robberies will happen is on the United States Hotel Luxury Yacht Cruiser. Village, whatever you want to call it. Did you see that thing? Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I uh, I'll look it up on the commercial break. But. There is a casino on the yacht. They have like a a little gym that's looking out to the water. I think this is obviously good. They're away from a lot of things. This is this could possibly be bad. You know how much partying is going to be going on on that thing? Lots. Think about like. The basketball team could have a game the, the day after. They're spending all night partying, listening to loud music, and they just, like, happen to have a bad game, you know. I, I would not be surprised. Like, look at this thing. The little pool even has sand around it. <laughs> yes, like, this has got to be, honestly, the best place in Rio right now, and it's away from everybody. Yeah, on the water. Wow, it's nice. It's super nice. Like, I don't know how... I don't know how the United States ended up getting this and no one else, but because they chose to. And you got to think that other countries that have money would have done the same thing, though. Maybe no one else thought about it. I, I guess because they're only they're the only people doing it. So, but yeah, this thing this thing is. I'm looking at it right now. This thing is super nice, luxury luxury cruise liner is what they're calling it. Olympic Village. I see look- it, Silver Sea. That's pretty nice. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but that that thing's super nice. Hopefully, they can stay away from all the crime. Hopefully, really, the whole Olympics. I don't know what you call it. The games can stay away from crime, and and hopefully it can turn into something good. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, well, we're going to take our second and last final break here, and we're going to get into some Nick Foles NFL news. So you guys don't go anywhere. Ben and I will be right back at, where is it, Ben? The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Nailed it. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Done. Just, just stops. Ends. Stops right there. Every time. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last bit of the news for the day. We're moving into the NFL and former... Free agent quarterback Nick Foles has signed a deal with the Drum Kansas roll, City. Please. Yeah, just Kansas, Kansas, City yeah, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, boom, boom. He ha- apparently has signed a deal about one year, one point seven five million plus incentives. Team option for the second year ranges between six point seven five and sixty million based on his two thousand sixteen performance. So, so let's just say the now ladder. there's literally no way he will be <clears throat> a member me. next year because they're not going to pay him six. To sixteen million dollars. There's no way. Well, I mean, it's not going to get sixteen million dollars because I don't think he's going to play it this year. So incentive wise, it's not going to occur. But no, Foles, no way. Foles obviously is reuniting with former coach that drafted him in Philadelphia, Andy Reid, who chose him in the third round in 2012. He's going to be backing up Alex Smith, who is uh, currently the starter with the Chiefs, um, and the other two quarterbacks on the roster being Tyler Bray and Aaron Murray, both young quarterbacks. Aaron Murray, second year player. Tyler Bray came a couple years ago from Tennessee. Yes. Aaron Murray from Georgia, so we have some more SEC backup quarterbacks there. Boom. Foles for his career was 19-16 and 16 in terms of a record. He was 53 touchdowns to 27 interception ratio. Remember, at one point it was like 27-3, to three, so clearly he made up for lost time. Yeah. In, throwing in 24 t- more. In 2013, he threw for 2,891 yards, 27 touchdowns, and two interceptions in 13 games and 10 starts. And I remember he had... Was it six or seven touchdown passes? Seven. Against the Raiders. I remember he had seven TD passes against the Raiders one yep. game. So, obviously, really the fall from grace for Foles. He got traded to the Rams, part of that Sam Bradford trade from last year, and he really just didn't really fit well in St. Louis. I think that's a good way to put it. Oh, yeah, I don't think he fit well in that offense at all. Uh, the Chiefs were one of three teams to reach out and consider acquiring Foles or at least possibly extend a contract offer. And that was the Chiefs, obviously, the Vikings, and the Cowboys. Okay, so for Foles, I think this is obviously a good move. He finally has a team now. He's signed as a backup. With a guy who drafted him, who's always had an approach that he can be successful in this league. And it's, it's good for Kansas City because I'd say Nick Foles is probably one of the better backup quarterbacks now. And the backup quarterback is really important. Look at, look at Andrew Luck got injured last year. Matt Hasselbeck came in and was serviceable. You know, he's he's a wily veteran, Matt Hasselbeck. So. Yeah, Matt Hasselbeck, yeah. Yeah, so he was serviceable for the Colts, you know, and to to have someone who could be serviceable, someone like Foles who's had three, three and a half years of starting experience yeah. uh-huh. to be a backup, that's really, really important. Alex Smith hasn't had a really a career of injuries. The only injury I can that really – The only injury I can really out. remember is the concussion yeah. that led to Kaepernick taking his starting job and him actually going to Kansas Worst City. Worst thing the Niners ever did. Really a blessing in disguise for Alex Smith. Yeah, he's been playoff contention every year. And, yeah, maybe they were really good at first, but it doesn't look like it this year. They did a – a prediction of their schedule this year, and they have them winning as yeah, they're, like three they're games favored, the most, I think. They're favored to lose every game. Or yes. they're, I should say they're not favored, they're not favored in, in any game. game. Yeah, Which, I mean, that's crazy to think about. But mm-hmm. Obviously, I, I, I don't I don't think they're going to go 0-16. The Lions no, did it a few years back, but I don't see it happening. But for, for the Kansas City, I think it's a great move that they have a very serviceable backup quarterback in mm-hmm. Foles. And I have a question that I extend to you because the Vikings obviously extended uh, interest in them. And they don't have very much in terms of backup quarterbacks there. But you look at the Cowboys, and that was a team I saw as very viable to be the team that Foles would go to. I figured that was where Foles exactly. would end up going. Uh, it's a team that he's very familiar with in terms of having played in the division. You know every team in that division well. You played for the Eagles. You played against, obviously, the Giants and the Redskins um, as well. And then Kellen Moore broke his ankle this week. Obviously, it's not like... 
because that happened like he was having to go to his choice you know what i mean and i think he made a smart choice that i totally didn't think of initially as much as how much it made sense for the cowboys with andy reed being there but where do you think they go from here in terms of a backup because they had kellen moore who going into the season you had kellen moore and dak prescott a rookie who was really coming out of a pass a catch and throw offense kind um, of a spread offense in, in mississippi sense, state he, and he ran, ran the a ball lot. yeah exactly so he obviously no offense to him was is probably not ready to be a starter no. and currently is a, the backup in that sense and then you had kellen moore who i like kellen moore a lot i think he, i always put him on my madden team when i make like a little fancy as like one of my second or third string quarterbacks he's a left-hander real fiery kid out of boise state but he does he lacks elite arm strength it's he's really not undersized. over undersized not overly athletic um, so even heading into the season when all were healthy, it was a, a thought of, do they bring in a veteran quarterback? Because are they okay going into the season with Kellen Moore as their backup? And now the best one on on the, uh, what should I say, on the that was available you know, on the on the paper on paper w- is now gone. I've seen rumors that Mike Vick has said, oh, I'd I'd be okay going and playing with the Cowboys. Well, of course, Mike Vick would be okay going anywhere. He just wants a job. Well, I'm not saying that as a you know yes or no. Obviously, as a Steeler fan, I'm aware with what he did last year. You know, he was serviceable at times, but he you know it's hard to learn that offense that quick and be the starter, um, especially the offense like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and obviously, they don't want to bet on a backup because Tony Romo. They're not. That's that's them saying, oh, he's going to get hurt. You know, what I mean, they want to believe he's not going to get hurt. Um, I've seen rumors that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Cowboys are interested in going and getting McCown from the Browns, who probably I could say is a viable option in the sense of availability because they have obviously RG three, they have McCown, they have um, I'll come back to him in a second. I forget his name, and then they have Cody Kessler from USC, who's a, who apparently is impressing Hugh Jackson a whole lot. So you would think that you want to go with the younger guys and let McCown possibly go, especially if you can get something back for him. Um, right. That sounds like the most viable thing to me now because otherwise, like I said, they're going to have to go trading for somebody unless they want to sign Mike Vick because there's not a lot of veteran free agent quarterbacks out there right now unless they want to go sign Johnny Menzel. I was, you know, I was, ironically, I was going to say that. <laughs> McCown makes sense. He has had starting experience. I think about the success he had for the Bears a few years back. Oh, yeah. Went over to Tampa and – Went over to Cleveland. He has started some games. First off, I wonder how does Kellen Moore even fracture his ankle? You're a quarterback in practice. You have the red jersey, whatever color. They always change it up. But you have the jersey where you can't even get touched. I mean, how do you even fracture your ankle? I told you, man, it's easy. Nah, it, I can frac- I have horrible ankles. It's I can cr- I can break my ankles walking. You know what I mean? Um, it's I've I've been in practice before when I played. I mean, it, obviously, it's not the same thing. You know, you're. you're you are tending to these guys a little more safely, but you know you can just walk, you know, catch your foot on the grass, or you can roll it running or anything like that, and then break it. You know what I mean? Right. It's an easy thing to do. Um, now I did pick, I did look at some lists of current free agent quarterbacks and and quarterbacks that could be traded. What do we have um, on there? Uh, well, apparently the Browns currently are reluctant to trade Josh McCown, so I'm, I'm not saying that's not viable, but okay. Quarterbacks that are on the uh, supposed trade block that are um, veterans in this league is Josh Johnson with the Ravens. He is currently, um, you know, somebody who has been listed as a trade possibility. You have Mike Glennon, obviously, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is funny. I mentioned to you before the show started that um, obviously, you know, he was a young quarterback that came out a few years ago, and then they went and got Jameis last year. So he's probably not going to be the starter, and but they still refuse. Jameis to... Winston looks like he's going to have a great future. Exactly, at least really it looks good like second that so half far. of his rookie year. Mm-hmm. And so they, you know, it seems like they're not going to trade him because they're like, well, why would we trade such a good backup in case Jameis gets hurt? Well, um, it's funny. I did say that um, that people were like, oh, did Jameis get traded? You know, or, I'm, I'm sorry, Glennon. did Glennon get traded because he wasn't at practice yesterday and he he was having a baby that day with his, his wife went into labor so he's like no i'm just here with my wife which made me laugh but um then mike lennon of course and then yes uh people are obviously going to say "Ooh, johnny menzel and then they said oh what uh, you know why, why don't they just go get some young kid and let dak prescott be the backup no thanks um real quick some notable free agents as well before i move on matt flynn tj yates mike vick johnny menzel so, I mean, I guess on that list, I'd say Mike Vick is probably the best option. He's been around really forever. He's got the most NFL experience. Because I don't really think that Tony Romo can play a whole entire year without missing some time. 
He's, you know, he's got the back injuries. He had the clavicle injuries last year. I don't expect him to really play a whole season. I would not want to go in as with Dak Prescott, a rookie. Who doesn't really know NFL play style. I wouldn't want him to be, you know, my backup. I, I think he obviously can maybe have a future. His style reminds me a lot like Cam Newton's, the bigger guy. He can run, a strong arm, but I would not want him. Yeah, strong arm. I would not want him to be my backup right now. He's just not, he's just not ready. Not yet, at least. Uh-uh. So yeah. I I definitely make a move for someone I guess on that best the best list you just mentioned there is Mike Vick, but I always oh, I, oh of free agents yeah what, but when I when I heard about Nick Foles going to the Chiefs and I thought about the Cowboys not having a backup really a, a solid backup I thought you know what this is the perfect time to bring in Johnny Manziel no oh, the God. Cowboys already stop 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 I, no. no I don't want to hear it no there's no, no, no here's there's why no it makes such sense. thing as a perfect time to bring in Johnny Manziel doesn't make sense he is not in condition he sucks. He's not a good quarterback, and he doesn't put football first, which is what you need. But here's why it makes sense. The make Cowboys sense. already thought about drafting him when he came out from Texas A&M. Mm-mm. So they already thought about I mean, that. Yes, but... He's going to be probably suspended for the first four games, right? We saw that. So, so no quarterback for four games. Okay, but you maybe Tony Romo can stay healthy Well, I imagine for four Tony Romo could stay healthy, but then what are you going to do? Are you going to dress Dak and hope for fingers crossed? Yes. Okay. And and with with Manziel, the Cowboys have a history of bringing in guys who have trouble. Think about Greg Hardy. It doesn't, and it doesn't go well for them, think so they about, need to stop. Think about Rolando McClain. It's not – okay, you're right. It has not gone One's well One's off the team and is not going to get signed by anybody, and Rolando McClain's suspended for 10 games, Ben. It has not gone well for them, but they have a history of bringing in guys who have off-the-field issues. So do the Terrell Bengals. Owens, you know. So, I mean – it makes sense that they would maybe try for Johnny Manziel. They're no. going to get him for nothing. No, I, I would. I, I'm not saying I would do it because I wouldn't. I would mm-hmm. not do it. But I'm saying I would not be surprised if it happens. That's what I'm saying. Uh huh. It makes sense. I can't. I can't let you say that and not be berated for it. I can't. Well, you already berated me for. You it, needed so. to be. That was that was crazy of you. I I'm, can't. I'm serious. I can't. I just. I can't even hear you say that well you already did you sir you have disappointed me today oh well johnny menzel is my to, least favorite por- person in the nfl i hate to do even more or than should Vontes i say Burfecht, out of the nfl even more than vontez perfect well now i clarified and said out of the nfl okay hey fun fact vontez perfect returned to practice today that's good for the Bengals. He's been a solid linebacker since yeah, when he Yeah, I wouldn't play. hate him so much if he could get his head out of his butt and stop being uh, a targeter. I mean, he's he's done quite well to become an undrafted free agent. Well, you know why he got undrafted. He punched yeah, that he dude in the face. Yeah, he has all those off-the-field issues. On the field, he yeah. was a great player. So. Well, clearly he's got some on-the-field issues lately, too. He's just a head case. That's all you can say yeah. about Burford. I mean, hey, he's a great player. But, yeah, yes. he's a head case. What are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, Oh, whatever. Man, whatever. Hey, so we are done today, but to, to give you an update on what we're talking about next episode, we have some contract extensions to discuss. In the NFL. In the NFL. A big golf merchandiser that is currently going to pull back a little bit on, what, back they on, are, on what they are doing. Pull back on a specific golf accessory. Pulling yeah. back on making golf clubs. Uh-huh. And then our world famous What's Trending. Yes. We're going to end the show with that as we do every second show of every week. As always here at the Golden City Media Concepts sports podcast so um where can they find us ben you can find us really anywhere you really like just if you google have a computer us, just google it or a phone or anything but specifically you can find us on our podcast network's homepage. that is gsmcpodcast.com make sure you click on the portfolio of podcasts click on the sports one you can find all of our episodes on there there's other sports related podcasts on there there's things that aren't sport related if you're interested Health and beauty. You heard the commercial earlier. No, I'm not sorry, health man. and beauty. Health and fitness. I'm sorry. We don't have any health so and we beauty have, one. We have the health and fitness. You know, movies, TV, entertainment, social media. Yeah. I mean, there is a health and beauty podcast if you want to listen to it. Yeah. So there's there's you one didn't hear about it earlier though. But anyway, so there's uh there's also things coming soon. You can click on that tab. Hopefully, the end of this year, early next year. You can find us on iTunes. iTunes is really big for us. The sports and recreation category. You can search Golden State Media Concepts. You can find all the podcasts on there. Find us on Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play for a media playback. You can find us on YouTube. We're on, did we say Twitter and Instagram? GSMC underscore sports. Well, you did now. I did now. So you can find us on there as well. Facebook, GSMC Podcast Network. It's just really every social media platform I could think of, except for really Snapchat. We're not on Snapchat. but It's okay. We don't need to be. Did you see that Instagram added stories like Snapchat? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what they're thinking. They're just really copying exactly everything. You gotta be hip, man. I'm surprised Snapchat doesn't have the story thing trademarked. But anyway, so that's gonna be it for this episode, though. All right. Well, hey, as always, I am Alex. I'm Ben, and we will see you guys on our next episode. Yes, we will. Don't you go anywhere until then, I guess, or do whatever you want. It's your life. See you next time.